Hello, welcome to Stories for Wonderful Children. I'm Dan Wendelin, your host and storyteller. Years ago, I began recording the bedtime stories I told my children every night. Now, we would like to share those stories with you. I hope you enjoy my Stories for Wonderful Children. Once upon a time, there was a ceiling fan. Uh, huh? A very special ceiling fan. Huh? And this ceiling fan was in a store all by itself. It used to be, the store that it was in used to be a ceiling fan store. But it had gone out of business. And they had removed all of the other ceiling fans. But they had not removed this one because... It was an enchanted ceiling fan. And the owners of the store did not know this. But they did know that no matter what kind of tool they used, they could not get it unattached from the, from the ceiling of the store. And sometimes when they came in to try to, unatt- to detach it, they couldn't even find it. That was part of the enchantment. Well... They decided eventually just to move out, and they did, and the store sat empty for quite some time. And then a new store moved in, and this store was a home improvement store, so it sold all sorts of things like paint and carpet and drapes and lights and light bulbs, different tools. And it also sold ceiling fans. And the magical ceiling fan felt that it fit right in. And then one day, a little girl came into the store. She was shopping with her daddy. And they were shopping for things for her room. And the ceiling fan saw the little girl and knew that there was something special about her. So when she came over and pointed at the ceiling fan and said, that's the one I want, Daddy. And her daddy ordered it, and the clerk said, you know, we've never been able to sell that one. And the girl and her daddy both looked at the clerk a little funny, and he said, we've never been able to sell it. We've tried to, and we've taken different tools to it, but it just won't come down. And when Ella's daddy said, that's silly. And so they got a ladder, and he climbed up it, and because the ceiling fan had decided that it liked this particular little girl, when the man reached up and pulled gently on it, the ceiling fan just popped off the ceiling. Pop! And he climbed down with it, and he said, See? No problem. And the clerk just stood there with his mouth open. He was so surprised. Well, the ceiling fan got put into the back of a boat, along with paint and curtains. And it got put up in the little girl's room. And it got painted. Now, can you guess what color it got painted? Purple. That is correct. And And pink. And then, at some time later, it got enchanted again, so that now it could be any color it wanted. But all this time, all this time, the little girl's daddy and the little girl's mommy and the little girl's brother, and the little girl herself, none of them had the faintest idea that this was an enchanted ceiling fan. They did not know until the day that the little girl woke up and she sat on the end of her bed and she said, you know what, I'm bored. And her mommy said, well, why don't you fly someplace on Joey? And the little girl said, I don't feel like it. I'm bored. She was in a bad mood that day. And her mommy said, well, why don't you go next door and play with Tracy? And the little girl said, I don't feel like it. I'm bored. And everything that her mommy said, she just said, I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. And she sat there at the end of her bed and she said, I wish I could do something new. And the ceiling fan began to slowly spin on its own. And at first the little girl did not notice. 
But as the ceiling fan began to spin faster and faster, it started to make a kind of sound like ceiling fans make. And the little girl looked up thinking, that's funny. I don't remember turning that on. And the ceiling fan seemed to be pulling air towards it instead of blowing air down onto her. And as she looked at it, she noticed that she could almost see something in the spinning blades of the fan. And as she looked, that something seemed to get more and more solid until it almost seemed as if a hole was opening up in the blur of the spinning blades of the ceiling fan. And she looked up and she could see that she was looking into what she had wanted, someplace entirely new. Well, she stood up on her bed and she poked a cautious finger up toward the hole thinking that she was about to get whacked by the blades of the ceiling fan. But her finger just went right through where the blades of the ceiling fan would have been and into this other place. Well, when Ella pulled her hand back down, she got her adventuring clothes on and called down to her mommy. She said, Mommy, I'm going for a trip in my ceiling fan. And her mommy, who is used to Ella making unusual pronouncements like this, said, have a good time, dear. Be home in time for dinner. And then Winella stood up on the end of her bed, and she reached up into this hole that her ceiling, spinning ceiling fan had created, and she climbed through. She found herself climbing out into a street. And she was sort of not on the street itself. She was kind of on a sidewalk. And she could already tell that she was in some place very different because it was not cars going up and down the street. It was giant robots with people in them who were driving, like up in the heads of them, but they just stomped along the road. Boom, 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 boom. And everybody seemed to have one. She even saw some that seemed to be driven by little kids that were just hardly bigger than the kid itself. Oh, and Ella thought, this is very curious. She thought, I'm going to explore. So she walked along for a bit until she saw someone on the sidewalk. And she went up to them and she said, Hello, can you tell me where I am? And the person looked at her and said, Certainly, you're in Tech Hall. Okay, said Winnell, that's great. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about Tech Hall? And the person looked at her funny again. She said, You're not from around here? And Winnell said, No, I got, just got here through my ceiling fan. And the person then looked at her really funny. They said, well, tech all is just tech all. It's a place where we have lots of technology and lots of, uh, we, everybody owns a robot to get from place to place. And we all have jobs uh, about computers. When Ella said, well, what do you do for fun? And the person tech all said, well, we like to play video games. And I said, really? I like to play video games too. Actually, I like to play games of any kind. And that person from Tech Hall said, well, I hope you enjoy your visit. So Anella walked down the street, and as she was... Walked walking, down the sidewalk? Walked down the sidewalk, yeah. I mean, along the side of the street. She walked down the sidewalk, and as she was walking along, she saw that she was coming up to a place that said bank. And just as she saw it, she heard a huge crash, and this giant robot crashed right through the wall of the bank, and it was carrying huge bags of money in each hand and the people inside the bank were yelling stop that robot stop that robot well the robot went stomping down the street stomp 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 and it was just knocking other robots out of the way and then from behind her Winella heard a siren and she could hear more fast stomping she looked back and there was a big blue and white robot with flashing lights on the top of its head she thought hmm that must be a police robot and it went stomping down the street, and she decided she wanted to see this. So she ran along the sidewalk. She could barely keep up, but soon she saw the police robot tackle the big robot and press a big button on its back, and then the big robot froze. And the police robot opened up the, the driver's uh, compartment in the black robot's head and took out the people who were driving who had robbed the bank. And then, just as they took out the people, the robot with the money in its hand just sort of shimmered and disappeared. And at first, when I thought that this must just be something else normal about tech all, but every, she looked around, she saw that everybody else 
was very surprised also. So Manella walked over and she said, was that, what was that? And the police robot said, I don't know. I've never seen a robot do that before. He said, it's a real mystery. And Manella said, well, I'm kind of good at solving mysteries. Would you like my help? And the police said, well, we don't know who you are, but if you want to help, you come back to the police station tomorrow. If we haven't already solved the case, maybe we'll let you help a little bit. And Manella said, okay. And she was glad that they had said that because she noticed that it was about dinner time. So she ran back to the hole in the sidewalk, which had a cover over it. She had to pick up the cover and move it. And then she climbed down. She looked through the hole and she could see her bedroom down below. And she climbed down and dropped to the floor. And she said, whew, what an adventure. And then she could hear the ceiling fan above her slowing down. And she looked up and there was nothing to be seen there. She said, you're a very unusual ceiling fan, aren't you? And the ceiling fan didn't say anything at all because it had no mouth. She said, will I be able to go back there if I want to tomorrow? And the ceiling fan slowly started to spin on its own. And she said, okay. And she went and she slid down the slide to go have dinner. But she was full of plans because plans to go back to Tekal the next day. Because if there was one thing that Winella loves on her adventures, it's a good mystery. Thanks for listening to Stories for Wonderful Children. I created today's story, but questions and witty commentary were supplied by my children. The music was created by Brandon Thompson. If you enjoy the show, please tell someone about it or leave a review on your podcast provider. Our website is storiesforwonderfulchildren.com, and you can also find us on most social media. I'm Dan Wendelin, reminding you to tell someone you love a story. Mm-hmm.